Greetings and welcome. My name is Adam Sweeting. I am the former Ward 3 School Committee representative, and it is my honor to serve as the moderator for this debate between the two candidates for uh, Ward 2 City Councilor. Uh, and uh, we are here at the Somerville Media Center studio. And I am joined by the two candidates, the incumbent J.T. Scott and the challenger Stephenson Amon. Both candidates have agreed that we will use first names during this debate. Uh, and in a moment, I will ask them to introduce themselves. But first, I wanted to go over the format, uh, which has been agreed to by the two candidates. First, each candidate will have two minutes to introduce himself. In the first part of the debate, I will ask questions of each candidate. The general topics of these questions were shared with the candidates, but not the specific questions. Um, the two candidates were informed of this beforehand. And then in the second half, uh, the candidates will each take turns asking each other brief questions, and they will have one minute to uh, answer each of those questions. And if time permits, uh, each candidate will have one minute at the end to make a closing statement. So with that, I would like to begin our discussion and debate, and we will begin with the candidates introducing themselves, each with two minutes, and I'm going to start with the challenger, Steph Amon. Uh, thank you, Adam. Um, hello, my name is Steph Amon, and I'm running for Ward 2 City Council. I'm very pleased to be here. I've been serving Somerville for the last 15 years. I started off 10 years um, doing Pop Warner in youth basketball, then I uh, got into the Tenant Association, where I became tenant president and serving families of low-income, no-income status. I also started working with the city of Somerville and the hard-to-reach communities and with census. I think that my role in Somerville has helped a lot of families. I'm looking forward to helping many more. It's been my pleasure serving Somerville. I've been very excited having an opportunity to meet a lot of new people as I'm going through this next phase of my life. Hopefully political office will help some of will achieve what it's always been, a great city for all people. Right now, we have a very difficult situation and I hope that we are able to come together as a community and address it. Housing is extremely difficult in some of them and we need voices that speak the truth about the residents that are truly here. Hopefully, I'll be the, able to go out there and do that for our people. Thank you, some of them. Thank you. Um, JT? Thank you, doctor. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm JT Scott. Uh, and for the last four years, I've had the privilege and the honor to serve as your Ward 2 City Councilor. Uh, I'm an engineer, an activist, a uh, small business owner and parent Argenziano kids. Um, been in the ward a long time and, and I got involved uh, running on a platform that was all about affordability, housing affordability, transparency in our local government, accountability uh, both within that government and uh, for developers that had been running roughshod over our neighborhood here in Ward 2 for far too long and frankly all over the city. My activism and work uh, that led to this role was all about fighting displacement, fighting gentrification, and ensuring that the developers in Ward 2 paid their fair share, that the development that was coming to Ward 2 would benefit the community, not just enrich the developers. That's been the fight of the last four years uh, that I've been in office and continuing to make sure that the residents of Ward 2 have a seat at the table and that we're able to negotiate tangible community benefits from all these developments and do everything we can to mitigate these construction impacts on the residents, make sure that we can get development without displacement. That's the ongoing fight. I look forward to having two more years to continue to represent, to work with my neighbors, and to do even more to increase the amount of affordable housing to increase the amount of housing stability and make sure that Somerville is a place for everyone, that all of my neighbors have a home. So um, I appreciate this opportunity and I'm really glad that the residents of Ward 2 are going to have an opportunity to hear from both candidates about our vision uh, and our plan for the future. Thank you very much. 
Well, thank you uh, to, to our two candidates for introducing themselves. Uh, I'd like to now turn our attention to the specific questions. Uh, and again, uh, each candidate will have uh, one minute to answer the questions. And I'm going to ask the candidates to be as specific as possible about uh, their policy proposals and ideas. Uh, and the first question that's come up with both of the, your introductions has to do with affordability and accessibility for all Somerville residents. Uh, so my question is, what specific steps have you or would you take to expand opportunities for affordability in Somerville? It's kind of a two-parter here. And what policies would you encourage the new mayor, we will have a new mayor uh, this coming year, uh, to adopt? And how would you build uh, support for your views on, on the city council? So we'll start with the, the incumbent this time and move to, to the challenger. All right. Uh, it's a, nice to start with a little question. Yeah. How, how long do I have to answer this? Uh, we'll give you a minute. And Fifteen then, minutes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's a huge question because uh, what I've already done is a very long list. Um, between the zoning overhaul that allowed for increased density near the squares while also protecting the neighborhoods and cutting off the predatory development pressure, the condo flipping that we were seeing back in the neighborhoods, um, you know, we are opening the doors to having more housing built in Somerville, but we're also ensuring that that housing comes uh, with a broad range of affordability. Uh, you know, for a two bedroom uh, at the lowest income levels right now, we're talking about $500 a month that that, that two bedroom is available for. So we already have a very strong inclusionary zoning program, but I've been fighting with the neighborhood council to ensure that some of these projects actually go above and beyond that, that we're getting more than that affordable housing percentage. I, I say the biggest thing that I can do in the next term is ensure that we build public housing in Ward 2, and I've got a plan for how to do it. All right, thank you. Um, perhaps we will come back if we have time to figure out what that plan is. Let's do it. S Steph? Um, so right now in Ward 2, we have a very uh, special situation going on with Brick Bottom and Boynton Yards, we can definitely transform our community into Kendall 2.0. This would definitely be a great opportunity to then cash in on our city, getting the trickle down effect of that wealth. The commercial properties then make rent a little bit lower and addressing the housing situation is not just some of those responsibility. It's gonna be a greater Boston responsibility. We know that the greater Boston area is definitely uh, underpopulating. There should be around 2 million people in the greater Boston area. So hopefully all the other cities around Boston can then um, take steps into building in housing into their cities. And hopefully that becomes a blueprint and we'll be able to address the housing situation in Boston. Uh, thank you. I'm going to ask a follow-up question along this question to, to, to both of you. Mm -hmm. And this time I'll start with Steph and, and move to JT. The question, sure. uh, how would you build consensus for uh, in the ward and across the city for your ideas about uh, housing uh, uh, affordability and accessibility? Uh, it's, it's, so the knowledge is already out there. Um, we already know that we have a situation that we need to address in our city, and we have a great opportunity to do it. I think uh, Somerville has a lot of intelligent people and knows that we can – uh, if we come together, address the situation, and it's a very smart um, way. Thank you. Good to you. Uh, thanks. I, I'll say uh, that the, the ideas, the solutions, they're already out there because they're coming from the community, mm. right? The, the organizing work in the Union Square Neighborhood Council, uh, the organizing work of the Mystic River Task Force, the, you know, the, the people who have come before and have looked at this, uh, I'm, I'm glad Steph uh, mentioned the expanding tax base because the work to unlock that commercial development in Boynton Yards is the work that I've been doing for the last four years, and we have six new lab buildings just in the pipeline right now. Those lab buildings are coming with two and a half acres of new green space. They're coming with incredible community benefits and expanded tax roles that are going to allow us to better serve our residents. So these ideas are not mine. I'm not... Uh, vain enough to think that I can think of all the right ones, but it's the housing advocates, it's the affordability advocates, and it's the community benefits advocates that I've been working with for years that already have the roadmap of how we can get there. All right. Thank you uh, to both of you. Um, our next question uh, concerns uh, policing and public safety, and as you know, this is a question uh, that has uh, reverberated across the city and across the nation concerning the proper role of, of police forces uh, in, in, in communities. Uh, so I uh, have a list of verbs here that I'm going to uh, read to the candidates, and I'm going to ask them to uh, specify which verb are they most comfortable with 
having being associated with their campaign. And so my verbs are, and these are, I'm taking these from the news. These are not my verbs. These are, these are out there in the, in the public sector. Um, to defund the police, to reform the police, to abolish the police, to retain the current status of the police, or to expand police resources and personnel. So again, our, the, our verbs are defund, reform, abolish, retain, or expand. So my, my question is, which verb would you like to have associated with your campaign and, and why? And so we'll start this time with JT and move to, to, to Steph. Well, I, I'm unapologetically in that defund camp. But that doesn't mean abolish. It doesn't mean uh, an overnight reduction here. What it means is listening to the city's own studies for the last 20 years. In 2001, the city commission to management study that came back and said we needed to reduce the number of personnel in the police department, that the, the police department was inefficient, wasn't operating well. In 2004, we retained Massachusetts Attorney General Harshbarger to come in and do a follow-up study. His, uh, his findings were even more damning. And in the, in the 20 years that we've been studying the police department, we've only added officers instead of following these very common sense recommendations that haven't been coming from radicals, haven't been coming from a reactionary place, just from how we can spend our resources best to support our residents. So people in Ward 2 tell me uh, unequivocally that we need to redirect the resources that are being spent poorly towards actual public health, food security, housing security, mental health supports, uh, and uh, substance use treatment as opposed to continuing to invest in a place where we haven't been spending those dollars well. All right. Steph? Uh, thank you for that question, Adam. Um, I, mine's is to expand. Um, these great men and women wake up every day and put their lives on the line to protect our city. How could we even think about taking anything away from them? And especially as our city grows, as we just talked about housing, we're going to be adding in thousands of more units, bringing in more people, and we want to lessen our police department. That that's one of the one of the greatest unions in our city right now, and we have to protect them because they're under attack. Individuals that believe that having less police is ridiculous. We need to expand and protect our police department and all of our unions. It's very important, the work that they do. And it would be wrong to take away from those individuals. We need to do better. And I hope I'll be able to do that for us. All right, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, our next topic, uh, we were those were the two kind of citywide issues, I suppose, affordability and, and police. I'd like to move to sort of more specific Ward 2 uh, questions. A uh, big topic, of course, is development in Ward 2. Um, and we are literally witnessing uh, the transformation of large swaths of Ward 2, whether it's right adjacent to Union Square or in Union Square or elsewhere. Um, you know, everything from the seen and unseen infrastructure, uh, the survival of small businesses, uh, transportation, and the vibrancy of this key urban center are at stake. Um, so I'm going to ask, and I know that this is, I'm asking you to, to try to keep it into 60 seconds, but perhaps <laughs> we can expand a little bit with some uh, follow-up. Um, could you describe uh, how in your, what is your vision for the development of Ward 2 and how it should continue to unfold in the coming years, uh, and how would you represent the ward in those discussions? And I think, Steph, you have the first opportunity this time. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so the development that's going on in Ward 2 is amazing. Now we have to look at Ward 2 like a little city inside a little city. As the southeast portion of our ward is being changed, Boynton Yards and Brick Bottom, we'll just look at that as our downtown. So we need to look at Lincoln Park as our central park. We want to definitely add on more amenities, more attractive to that, because I think that park can definitely be um, a little a, little better for the community and then we have to look also look at Perry Park and bring in some of that um, the main problem that's going on right now is a lot of the traffic that's going through so we'll take a look at the traffic law I know director Dawson is an amazing man and would love to help change that we want to take care of our bike lanes our bus lanes and make sure that we have a little bit more parking in the community because we definitely can address that I think that if we properly space out a lot of the um, <clears throat> parking spots that we have right now 
we can definitely um, make the city a much better place. And I'm looking forward to improving our ward. Thank you. Uh, JT? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, development ward two uh, has been, <laughs> and sometimes it feels like an all-consuming process because uh, prior to taking office, we didn't always have the residents really engaged in these conversations about what we needed to get out of these buildings. The conversation was entirely driven by what a developer's profit margin was going to be. We've shifted that. We have changed the zoning. We have required these community meetings that I've been hosting already. I've hosted over 150 neighborhood meetings, most of them about developments here in Ward 2, all of which centered on making sure that the residents, the neighbors, the neighborhood gets what it needs out of those developments. And we've come up with some incredible compromises and collaborations. The development that's happening uh, in Boynton Yards, in Brick Bottom, in Union Square East cannot be considered as a city within a city. We have to consider it in terms of its impact to all of our neighborhoods. This is, especially when it comes to parking, because if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And these city street networks cannot handle an extra 10,000 cars. It's the wrong direction for us. So, all right, thank you. Uh, I'm just, as a kind of a, a follow-up, um, I'm hoping if, with 30-second uh, responses, you could each talk a little bit about how um, your vision for the small businesses in, in Union Square, uh, many of whom are, are, are feeling uh, sort of uh, with the, 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 the big developments going on, where, where, where are they in, in the picture? So I wonder if you could, uh, for 30 seconds or so, talk a little bit about how your role as a counselor, either uh, in your current role or, or staff moving into the role, how would you work with the small businesses in Union Square uh, to ensure their, their survivability? Well, I think, you know, as a small business owner, I understand very, very well how hard the last year and a half has been. Um, but the challenges to small businesses in the square uh, didn't start with COVID. And we do need to get better as an economic development department at looking at and focusing on uh, the needs of small businesses, not on how we attract the largest businesses to Somerville. Because those small businesses are of our community, they are in our community, and they're part of how we build our community. Those are the nexuses and the places where people come together. So. Uh, we do need to go farther to ensure sustained affordability for small commercial spaces and part of that is putting strong enforcement behind our vacant storefront ordinance that i helped write it's been on hold because of the pandemic but we need to act to really encourage these landlords to open up those empty storefronts because there's no shortage of people who have a dream who are living here right now and want to start these small businesses we need to make sure the city's open for business Steph, on small businesses in Union Square? Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, that's great. Thank you for bringing that up because I get to address more about the spacing out of the parking. We have to understand that we're sharing between residents, businesses, as well as a lot of pe workers that come in from Boston that park in our city. So um, our commercial space is definitely small in terms of the small businesses having parking to bring in their customers. But we definitely want to take care of our small businesses. It's truly important. Obviously, Somerville is a small business town. Um, so we taking care of them would be um, essential to the development of our city. I think that as we develop more of our ward, that we give the smaller business an opportunity to relocate in some of the areas that are about to be making a lot of money. Um, give them first priority if they want to move. Um, I definitely love the storefront fix up. I think when uh, Mayor Cota Tony had started that almost 20 years ago, it definitely gave a change to the city. And I think it will definitely give a change to our ward if we can definitely get those small businesses to improve the storefront. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to um, uh, move on to the sort of second part of our, our discussion. This is really where the two of you will have the opportunity to ask questions of each other. Yep. Uh, so I'm hoping that the questions can be kept to about 30 seconds and the responses to about a minute. So um, I think, Steph, do you want to ask the first question to the, the incumbent and then the incumbent to the challenger? So go sure, ahead. Adam. Thank you. JT, any city that is 45% Latino represented in this education system, uh, why are you not supporting the two Latino representatives for city council? Uh, you mean the two candidates? Yes, sir. Uh, for city council. My apologies. Thank you on the correction. Uh, no, no, no. It's... Uh, 
That's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, because representation matters. Sure. 100%. But I think what's most important in your role as a city councilor uh, is your ability to represent the people of your ward, especially as a ward councilor. Mm -hmm. Our policies, our ability to create a more just city, our ability to more equitably distribute the resources we have and create a path forward, uh, transcend what any individual looks like. So while representation absolutely does matter, policy matters uh, even more. And so uh, there are barriers to entry to this process, and I, I can talk about those more later, but when I look at the candidates, when I look at the policies they're supporting, I, I have to go with what I think is going to be best for the people of Somerville and uh, for the people of those wards. All right. JT, a question for the challenger, Steph? Yeah, so uh, Steph, the Ward 2 has been directly under the hammer of construction for the last several years. Uh, you know, infrastructure, infrastructure construction, uh, private construction projects. Uh, I saw somewhere that you wrote that you think Somerville needs three more assembly rows, and one of them here in Ward 2. And I got to say, I was a little surprised. Where in Ward 2 would you put assembly row, and uh, why would you think that's a good fit for this neighborhood, and what would you do if that was the case to protect the existing residents from displacement and the effects of that? Oh, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Well, the location of these would be brick bottom and Boynton Yards. I think that we have a great opportunity of being Kendall 2.0, bringing in a lot of those second and third tier biotech labs. Um, would be adding in more job opportunities for the citizens of our ward. I think Assembly Row is a great example, beaming example of what a plot in a, an area that is undesirable and un, not used too well to turn it into a transform into a fantastic area. I think that that would be a great opportunity for our city. We need to jump on top of that because that is the way that we are going to get costs lowered in Somerville. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. So, Steph, it's you, now your turn to ask a question. So J JT just asked, so you have a turn, question. Mm -hmm. So um, people tell me that you are interested in the democratic socialist movement, um, and I was hoping that you can uh, go deeper into that. Uh, sure, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I am. I'm a democratic socialist. Uh, I was inspired, uh, honestly, by the campaign of Bernie Sanders. Sure. And uh, particularly the vision for a society where we can lift everybody up. You know, it, it has become clear that uh, we are only as strong as the, the weakest, most vulnerable members of our society. We are only as safe uh, as those who are most unsafe. And so we have to lift up everyone around us. We have to work together. We are in a society and in a city of staggering inequality. Mm. And uh, ultimately, democratic socialism means two things. It means more equitably distributing those resources. It means increasing people's access and their stability in their housing. And it also means, by doing that, making them more involved in the democratic choices and day-to-day -day operations of the city, because we make this city together. It's the people here. And so, uh, yeah, I really believe democratic socialism uh, increases the good for all. Thank you. Okay, so your turn for a question for, for, for Steph. Oh, all right. I got so distracted by that yeah. one. That was a, that was a good one. Yeah. So um, stormwater management and flooding have been major issues in War II for decades. Uh, we have one of the lowest amount of tree coverage and uh, green space uh, in the city and a scorching urban heat island effect. Um, you know, what will you do if, if you're elected uh, for the People Award to to mitigate those stormwater and flooding impacts. Oh, thank you. Jeez, a layup. So uh, obviously, Somerville is a very old town. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity to take care of our pipes when we had the chance to. So as I as we go further and further and develop in our ward, I'll make sure that developers also put in a piece or a portion into fixing the pipes of Somerville. 
Um, that is the reason why we've been having a lot of flooding issues. And unfortunately, during this rainy, su uh, this rainy summer, Lake Street literally turned into a lake. So we definitely have to address our pipes and making sure that we get that handled and finding developers that will want to get that done. So thank you for that one. Appreciate it. So, okay. Um, we're nearing the end of our, our time here, which goes very fast. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'd like to do uh, in the last uh, three or four minutes here is I'd like to give each of you a, an opportunity to uh, give a closing statement about why uh, you should be the, the Ward 2 City Councilor. Uh, and I'd like you to specifically, you know, is there anything else that the, the voters of Ward 2 should know about your ability to represent the ward and your, your passion for representation of the ward and your commitment to some specific uh, policies that will uh, be of interest to the residents and the businesses and, and frankly, the whole city, because if there's any ward in the city that, that, that is the crossroads of the city, it is, it is Ward 2 and, and Union Square. So I think Steph had the opportunity to, to begin, so this time I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, uh, JT make the first closing statement. Yeah, well, I, I thank you, Dr. Sweeting. I, you know, I really, um, I'm glad the residents of Ward 2 are getting a chance to hear from both of us today. I, I really appreciate this opportunity because um, while I think there's a, a great deal of understanding of what the issues are facing the city, the question of how to approach those, uh, how to actually fix these problems of affordability, uh, stormwater problems, um, uh, there's clearly a difference, and I think it's uh, vitally important that the people of the ward understand what those different approaches are and what those visions are. Um, you know, the, the most important thing we can do as, <clears throat> as ward counselors is to represent the values of our neighbors and make sure their voices get heard. Uh, it is, it has been the great challenge and the great honor of uh, these last two years uh, to do that work and to carry that work forward, and I look forward to more of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Steph? Uh, 60 seconds? Uh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so well, thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Um, just about pleased to get the opportunity to be here. It's been a long time. I've been serving people since high school, student government, and just getting the opportunity to put myself in this lane has been a dream. Uh, some of it has meant so much to me. When I had came here, I was, I was a wreck. I had the inability to walk, didn't know what to do with my life. And uh, if it wasn't for Somerville, I don't know where I would be right now. The city saved me. And I have the opportunity to make it a better place. And I want to do that so much. I think the power is in the, in the hands of the people, it truly is. Um, if you give me the opportunity of stepping in and helping change Somerville, I would be more than happy to. It has been a dream of mine to um, to work with the people that I've been working with, and it's a pleasure doing this work every day. I'm here to serve the people. Um, some of it means a lot to me, and it would be my pleasure, my honor, my desire to be the champion for the people each and every day in City Hall. Thank you. So I want to thank our two candidates here. Um, this concludes our debate for the Ward 2 um, City Council race. Uh, I want to remind all v viewers that our election day is November 2nd, and uh, the last day to register to vote is October 13th, and please get out to vote. The city needs to hear from everybody. So thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. you. Uh,